if you've already created a nice UI for your home assistant or smart home, well, it's time to brag about it. And the best way to brag about it is to display it somewhere where everybody can see it. That's why today we are going to look at Elcro Clear Vision 11 inch touchscreen. We'll start in a couple of seconds. I knew this t-shirt will come in handy, but let's get cracking with today's video. Today we are going to look at the touch screen that you can use for various purposes. But one thing that popped instantly on my mind is to have it display UI like this. And what this is, this is a Crow Vision from Elecro, 11.6 inch display that is originally made to be used with SBCs, of course Raspberry Pis, but also other devices that match the format. There are some really neat functionalities about this display, and this is actually a first time that I've seen the display has one excellent functionality, but we'll talk about it later in the video. Let's start with the basic specs. It's a 11.6 inch capacitive IPS touchscreen. If you're wondering about the pixels, it is 1366 by 768 pixels. Touch part is capacitive touchscreen with 5 point touch ability. And one of the excellent functionalities is the field of view or viewing angle. It is 178 degrees, which really allows a big field of view. In terms of display, you really do get everything with it to hook up, for example, Raspberry Pi 3, 4 or 5 even. But you're not limited to that because it does have a slidable fixed columns that allows you to position where you need them to be to mount a single board computer on the back side. And I've mentioned one neat functionality. Let's look at the ports. You have a speaker interface where you have left and right channel, but you also have a 3.5 mm headphone jack. There you can attach the external speakers. The display on the back side also features the menu button, power button, up, down and error. Everything you need to go into the menu section of the display and configure, for example, brightness or something else. The neat thing is that in the kit, the keypad is also included. External keypad. You hook it up with a supplied wire and then you can mount the display and even if the buttons on the back side are not accessible, you can still access the keypad that's included in the box. Besides that, it also features the micro USB connector and that connector with the supplied cable, if connected to the SBC, can be used for the touch functionality of the display. But besides that, there is also mini HDMI compatible display port where you can of course hook up any HDMI compatible device. But since this is a HDMI port, you cannot just hook the SBCs. You can for example hook this up to the laptop if you have or your desktop PC for external monitor for example, to your camera or something else. Even devices like a Fire TV, Chromecast devices or Mi TV stick that I actually tested this device with will work. But I mentioned one neat functionality and this is the USB-A port and this port is used to provide power to the SBC. There is a catch with that and I'll talk about that catch a little bit later, but it's nice to see that finally somebody has thought of providing power also to the SBC. With other models, not just from Elcro, but from other companies, you need to provide separate power for display and then additional power to the Raspberry Pi. Here, with the supplied power adapter, and that is 12 volts and 2 amps, you are able to provide 5 volts, 3 amps to the Raspberry Pi. Also, the display features 3M adhesive tape that you can use to stick this display somewhere. For example, if you have a hole in your drywall, you can mount it there. As I'm living in an apartment with reinforced concrete all around me, I am not able to mount it, unfortunately, to no wall. Elcro did mention that they will be releasing STL file for the back side, where you can print your own box to protect the electronics and also use it to mount the device on wall. But unfortunately, I couldn't get my hands on it, so I couldn't print it and we are here where we are. The list of compatible devices, according to the Elcro, is very long, ranging from Raspberry Pi 0WH, Raspberry Pi 3, Raspberry Pi 4, BeagleBone, Latte Panda, Nvidia Jetson Nano, Orange Pi, Banana Pi, etc. But unfortunately, Raspberry Pi Zero... Yeah, the display would work with it. 
but the issue is performance with even Raspberry Pi 3B. That doesn't mean that there is an issue with the display. Unfortunately, this all depends on capabilities of the Raspberry Pi or SBC that you will be using. So if you're planning to buy display to run it with the SBC, Google around and see if the board that you have or are planning to get will work with a resolution such as this one here. When the display was initially released, I think it was end of last year or beginning of this year, there were some issues with the Raspberry Pi OS, Raspbian, but those issues have been fixed and now it works perfectly out of box. It did work okay previously, but the resolution was wrong, now it is fixed. And besides Raspbian, you can use the display with Windows operating system, Mac OS, Debian, Ubuntu, Android, and they are even mentioning Kodi, although Kodi is not an operating system. If you are interested in dimensions, the viewing part of the screen is 256 mm by 144 mm, while the total monitor size is 290 mm by 184 mm. The easiest way to start assembly, but I'm always doing things wrong, is to first mount the Raspberry Pi or some other SBC that you want to use this device with, and then slowly add the cables. When you are connecting cables, be careful, there are two USB-A to micro USB cables. One is power only and the other one is power plus data. Power only cable, which is a bit thinner, is supposed to be used with the USB-A connector on the display size and micro USB connector on the Raspberry Pi size. That way, the Raspberry Pi will receive the power. The other cable should be hooked around the other way. The USB connector is hooked to USB slot on the Raspberry Pi and the micro USB connector on the display itself. Although you have everything inside the box that you need to hook up something to this device, I would recommend still for you to do a uh, shopping around. For example, instead of using mini HD cable that is supplied in the box, I would buy one that has a 90 degree connector. That way the cables would be easily tucked in behind the display and it would all look much nicer. On the product link page, and the link will be included down in the video description, you have additional external or internal links. For example, Wikilink, where you can read a bit more information about the display, how to connect it, what is supported, what is not supported, features of the display, specification, how to hook up everything, driver information for the Mac OS, and how to access and the control on-screen display on the monitor to configure, for example, contrast, brightness, etc. There is also a link to the drivers, plus you have a link to user manual, which is included in the box. If you hook everything up and you do not have virtual keyboard on the screen, you cannot enable it, you will need to install it. Most of the websites will tell you to install the Matchbox keyboard. And I tell you, don't install it. Instead, I really would recommend that you use keyboard that is called Onboard. Onboard is much more easier to configure, it has more themes, it can be configured to auto pop up when you need it, to be hidden when you don't need it, etc, etc. But ok, we mentioned the standard use. Hook it up to your notebook or laptop, hook it up to your, for example, mobile phone or camera for external or additional display, hook it up to your Chromecast device to watch TV or stream media there. As soon as the Elcro mentioned that they will be sending me this display for a review, I said I know exactly what I want to test on it. And this is this LCARS display or theme from within Home Assistant. Sure, you can use any theme, but I think that this display on the wall with the black bezel is really giving that tracky wipe. And it's good that I bought this t-shirt a couple of months ago, because I knew this year I will be having at least one video featuring the, my favorite theme for Home Assistant. So what are the good things and what are the bad things? The good thing about this device is that everything you need to hook it up to get it working is included in the box. Also, out of box, it supports the Raspberry Pi. The negative side of this display, unfortunately, is the power adapter. My Raspberry Pi 3B was really struggling with the low voltage. I really wish that the power adapter was just one amp stronger and that it would provide just a bit more amps to the Raspberry Pi. Sure, I can always use the second power adapter and hook it up directly to Raspberry Pi and provide it with the adequate power, but then this whole deal is losing its appeal. The next thing that is both good and bad is the bezel. At bottom part of the display, the bezel is a bit larger than on other side of the display. 
And there I think that bezel is just a bit too big. Of course, you will not be using this as a tablet and holding it in your hands, unless you print some nice and thick case to manage to get all the cables inside. But still, I just wish it was a bit, bit, bit thinner on the bottom side. The second thing some of you may see as a bad characteristic is the resolution. But while I was skeptical before I turned on the display itself, while using it I didn't notice anything wrong with the quality of the image that I was watching or seeing on the screen. I know a lot of you will now start screaming, but you can buy a tablet. Sure, but this is not a tablet. This is much more than tablet. Actually, it can be used as a display for your Nook or any other device that you have. Yes, tablet can be cheaper. Tablet can even have a better screen, but then it will not be cheaper. But tablet is just a tablet. It needs to run Android OS or something similar. You can even hook up the HDMI hub and have multiple devices connected at the same time and then by clicking the button, change the source of the display on the device. Is this device for you? I really cannot tell you. It all depends for what use case you want to use it and if there are any other alternatives. If you go on the Elcro page, and once again the link will be down in the video description, you can select the plug for the country or area where you live, but also you can try and get it packed together with the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gig, or Raspberry Pi 5, 8 gig. The first one costs around $62, while the Raspberry Pi 5 costs around $19. I don't have anything else to add. If you want to use this display with Home Assistant and run it in a kiosk mode, you will not be wrong. It will work perfectly and you will be really satisfied with both quality of the display and the functionality that you get out of box. On the other hand, if you plan to watch Dune 1 and 2, just remember the resolution of the screen. It will still be able to show you what you want to see, but the quality of the display is not for film viewing. And while you are already here, if you're looking for some additional screens, don't forget to check what other option Elcro is selling. I'm currently in possession of around three or four displays from them, and they are really all okay. Depends on for what you want to use them. I really like the previous one that I got that had the backlight RGB. I really hope that you did find this video interesting. And if you did, don't forget to hit the like button down below. And while you are already there, check if you are subscribed. If not, click on the subscribe button so you don't miss the future video releases. And before I wrap up the video, I want to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. Let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, liked, subscribed, commented and shared my videos. Thank you. If you want to support the channel, you can do it by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. You can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Or you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and live long and prosper.